So is this finally the best dock for your M4 Mac Mini? Let's talk about it. Okay, welcome back to the channel. So I get asked all the time, companies call me up and they say, we want you to review our brand new M4 Mac Mini hub or dock. And a lot of times I turn them down because there's just nothing new that they bring to the table. This one is actually quite different. Now, full disclosure, so when a case has called me up and they said, we have this brand new M4 Mac Mini hub we want you to try out, and they showed me the features, I said, definitely, because this one actually could finally be the one that I use on my desk over there because it has a lot of the features I'm looking for. Now, I don't want to spoil the video. Stay tuned through the whole video, but this might be one of the best ones I've tested so far. Now, is it perfect? It's really, really close for a lot of people. There's a couple of reasons it may not be perfect for every single person. I'll cover those at the end of the video, but I think it's the best attempt so far at some of these kind of little, these little hubs that look like kind of the Mac Pros and stuff like that. You've probably seen a ton of these. This one's quite different, and it's done a really good job at creating one. Okay, so what am I gonna do in this video? Well, number one, I'm gonna go through all the features right now of the dock right here, that's number one. Then I'm gonna to try to explain to you exactly why I think this is different than all the other ones on the market right now. That's gonna be number two. Number three will actually be at, you know, kind of near the end here, will be what are some of the misses on this thing? Were there any misses? I said it's almost close to perfect. We're gonna talk about those as well. And then we're also gonna talk about how you can actually pick one of these up. You can check out the timeline down here for all the information. Just note that this is not available at the time of this filming, but it will be like in a week or 10 days or something. But I'll have all the information at the end of this video on how you can get ready to get this for the best pricing. You can actually sign up to get it for a really incredible price. We're gonna cover those prices later, so stay tuned for that as well. Okay, so what do we actually have sitting here? We haven't covered the name of the product yet. This is actually the Acasis. M4, 40 gigabit per second, two bay enclosure docking station, all right? And I'll put the model number right here. This is gonna be the TB1201, TB1201 model number right there. And uh, so let's just kind of dive into it. We're gonna start number one with the build quality. Okay, let me just start off by saying this is full aluminum alloy, and it's, it's, the build quality is great. It, it feels like a tank. There's no rattles, nothing. When you put your Mac Mini in there, it seeds really well in there. There's some rubber feet in the bottom so it doesn't slide on the desk. That's perfect. And the side over here, it's actually got a grate in here, so it obviously lets air into your Mac Mini so your Mac Mini can get air because obviously your Mac Mini is sitting up like that. And then also on the side over here, there's a black button over there. I'll show you some close-ups on the screen here. But you can go ahead and turn your Mac Mini on and off. Obviously, you don't have to pick it up anymore because it's on its side. So that, that problem's been averted, and they fixed that problem with that button. It's a nice touch. Okay, so now on this other side over here, there's a removable panel here, and I'll show you a close-up of that as well. And this is kind of where all the magic happens. You can see it right in there. There's a place for two... M.2 NVMe SSD drives you can throw in there. And you can do a whole bunch of things with this. You can leave them separate. You can put them in RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD. It's inc you know, incredible, obviously. So later in the video, I'm gonna go through some speed tests on there and show you exactly how cool this thing is and uh, you know what sizes you can put in and stuff like that. But that's actually where the magic happens and where a lot of the things on the other ones missed, this one got it right. Okay, so what comes in the box? Well, funny story, first of all, I got the box here, I took out the actual dock, and then I was looking for everything that came with it, and there's like this little white box on the bottom of the box. I didn't see it, because it looked like it was the bottom of the box. So search for this box, because everything you need is in here. Okay, so in the box, you get a Thunderbolt 4 cable, a little short one like this, and this is what connects the Mac Mini to the actual Hubbard dock here. And then what you also get, you get a screwdriver, that's number two. You get a couple of thermal pads as well. And these are like super thick thermal pads for the SSDs. It comes with four of them and they're like 10 millimeters thick, crazy thick. I only use two of them, but I think I'm gonna put on four so that it can actually reach the top of the aluminum shield here on the side. But overall, those are the thickest thermal pads I've ever seen, so they don't skimp out on those as well. And then it comes with this kind of like power cable here and a plug, and, and I'll show you kind of a power cube here. Now, the reason you need this is if you actually need to draw more power into this area, into the hub, you can actually plug it in and bring in some more power. Full disclosure though, I tested this with two M.2 drives and I had a whole bunch of stuff connected and I didn't need any additional power, maybe because it's getting enough from the Mac Mini. Obviously, if you do need additional power, this is what this is for and there's a slot in here or a plug that you can plug this into. So it comes with that additional power cube and it allows you to bring in more power into this actual dock so you can power more stuff. For instance, if you had other equipment that was drawing too much power, you can use that. But so far, I have not had to use it. Okay, so now let's talk about the ports on this, and this is really important as well. We'll talk about the front first here, and I'll show you some close-ups as I'm talking about it. So on the front, what do you get? First thing I hear at the top is a button up here, and this turns on and off the actual dock. 
Obviously, you can turn on and off the Mac Mini on this other button over here, but on the front, this, this button turns off the dock itself. And then you get three USB A's, and these are going to be USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second ports on here. Now, just a quick tip here. Everyone's going to say, well, I don't use USB A. Obviously, you could use this for kind of keyboards and mice, but these are 10 gigabit per second. So if you want to just get like a, a $5 dongle to convert, you know, you can actually convert stuff to USB C, then you can just use these with any of your USB C as well. And I, I love doing that, and I do it all the time. So these are pretty useful at 10 gigabit per second, and they're all in the front here. Plus, you obviously, you have your Mac mini ports still open on the other side over there, so it just adds additional ports. You have, obviously, two 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports over there coming from your Mac mini. Okay, let's talk about the ports in the back now. These are important as well. So if you look back here, the top one over here, I believe is a Thunderbolt port, but this is what plugs in. It's called your host port, and it plugs into your Mac mini with this short cable, the Thunderbolt 4 cable, that gives you kind of the power and the data throughput to your Mac mini. That's the, you know, that's the port that is obviously the one you always have to have connected. Then what do we have here? We have two DisplayPort 1.3 ports here. And what it's saying is that one, you, if you can basically do one 4K monitor at 144 hertz using one of these, or you can do two, 4K monitors at 60 hertz, and definitely go to the website. You can check out all the information on that. But I just wanted to kind of explain that. Now, that doesn't mean you're limited. Like someone might say, well, what about 5K? Well, you can still use your Mac Mini over here. You can use any of these Thunderbolt ports back here to plug in in a monitor at 5K. So this is just additional stuff, which is really good. And then below here, this is a USB-C port down here. And this is actually where you plug in. Remember I show you that little power cube from before with the cable? If you need additional power into the actual uh, dock here, you can go ahead and plug in the power right in here. Now, I didn't have to use that, like I said, but you may have to under certain circumstances for sure, and it's back there. And then finally in the top, it gives you additional ports on the top over here and the ones that we really want here. So it gives you an SD card reader and basically a TF card reader over here. And it says these are both 4.0. Let me just see what it says statistically over here. It says these are going to be UHS-2 up to 312 megabytes per second on those card readers. And let me just show you, I tested them. I was getting like 275 megabytes per second transfer rate and stuff like that. So it was really fast, a lot faster than the other ones I've tested in the past. So overall, I love them on the top because you can just drop the cards in and it's a great placement. So you got stuff on the top, the front and the back, and then you got the side panel with all the SSDs. Okay, let's talk about the SSD slots now because they're interesting here. So what it actually says is it says on, on the documents and stuff, it says it, it comes with two 20 gigabit per second SSD kind of slots by themselves. So any of the two can get up to 20 gigabit per second, but then it says when you combine both of them in RAID 0, it can be up to 40 gigabit per second. So I want to put that to the test. Is this true 40 gigabit per second test speeds? Can we get really fast, you know, upwards of close to 3,000 megabytes per second in RAID 0? That's what we're going to test. Okay, one last thing too is the beauty of this thing is it can actually support up to two eight terabyte M.2 drives in here. So up to 16 terabytes total. Think about that, 16 terabytes, it's crazy. Of course, you have to be rich to buy those, but even if you put in two four terabytes, you'd have eight terabytes in here, but you can get up to 16 terabytes by having two drives like that, pretty crazy. Okay, and a lot of their documentation and stuff online, what do they show? They show that they're using Samsung 990 Pro drives. I don't have those now, so what I wanted to try is I actually have two Samsung 990 Evo Plus SSDs at one terabyte. I'll show you some pictures of that. So I inserted both of those in there, and uh, you know, obviously they showed up as completely separate drives. Obviously they were fully, I already had them formatted as APFS, as separate drives, and they show up on my monitor just as separate drives. So everything worked perfectly there. Now we're gonna do a couple of tests here, but first of all, what I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and just test the speeds of these individually. Remember it said if you use them just like this, if you don't do anything with RAID, they're only 20 gigabit per second. So how fast are these just by themselves? So I ran both of the, kind of both slots, I ran some test black magic tests on them, and what do we get? Okay, so here's the first test on the first drive, obviously one of the two. I went ahead and ran it. Look at this, this is black magic. So we're getting about 1400 and, you know, 1407 on the writes. And on the reads, we're getting about close to 1600, 1573. So you can see here, this is the first drive I'm testing, but you can see this kind of holds true with 20 gigabit per second. We're not getting, you know, 40 gigabit would probably be double this. So it does hold true there. Let me just test the second drive really quickly. Okay, here's the second drive here. You can see it. It's almost exactly the same. It's just a couple, I guess, a couple megabits per second difference here. The other one, let me just see here, around 1600 on that as well. So there, I mean, obviously it's the same drive. It's using the same enclosure basically. So this is exactly what we expect. Okay, now we're gonna try to put this into RAID 0, both of these drives, and see if we get faster speeds like they're claiming, 40 gigabit per second. So let's take a look at my screen right here, and let me go ahead and get this set up. So we're gonna go over here to the other folder here. You can see it down here. And we're gonna to go to Disk Utility, and let's open this up. 
So I don't know if you guys are familiar with doing this, but I'm gonna show you how to do this very quickly. But I have the two drives showing up over here as separate drives right now. I'm gonna select the first one. I'm gonna go up to File, you can see it up here, and then I'm gonna go all the way down to Rate Assistant right there and click on Rate Assistant. So I'll show you how to do this. It's actually really, really easy. So the very first one I'm gonna select is RAID 0, because this is gonna basically give us the speed that we want. You're only gonna, you know, if, you know, you can see that it's got some other options down here, but RAID 0 is what we actually want to give us the speed. You can go with mirrored, which is RAID 1, which is gonna give you redundancy. We're not gonna do that, so we're gonna go with the first one. Now, if obviously something fails, you know, there could be a problem. Here's the two drives here, though, and uh, you can see them over here on my screen as well. They're separate drives right now, but we're gonna go ahead and select both of those you know, so we can make these both into RAID 0. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name, something with RAID 0, just so I know that I've created a RAID 0 directory on this. So I'll just call it RAID 0 Samsung, and then Evo, just so I know what the two drives are on here with the plus here at the end. We're gonna make this um, APFS now. That's actually pretty straightforward. RAID 0 is fine, two terabytes. And then the chunk size I always make as big as possible here. And we're gonna go ahead and do 256 there. I'm gonna click Next. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna say it's gonna create the RAID here. I'm gonna click Create. And look what happened. So it's going ahead and creating the RAID in those drives. If you look on the right-hand screen over there, it removed the drives. And it's gonna go ahead and put it back here in one second with RAID 0. And then in the middle here, I'll show you, it's gonna say, you know, successfully created right there. So you know, there we go. It's completely created right now. Now, if you look at my screen again and I click on it over here, in the future, there's the RAID over there, but in the, it's actually got two terabytes, but you can go down here and you can actually delete your RAID over there if you ever wanted to delete it, and then you could reformat the drives. That's how you kind of get rid of RAID. But we're gonna leave it as it is because now we have RAID zero, and we're gonna do some really high-end tests here to see if this actually solved the problem. Okay, so if you look at my screen here, we actually brought up Blackmagic, and we're gonna test this RAID configuration now. Look what happened. So now by rating it, we're getting 2774 and we're getting 2786 on the read. So let me just do one more here. So on the writes, we're getting 2774 again, 0.8. And on the reads, we're getting 2785.5. If you can, I mean, obviously it worked perfectly, right? So now we're in Thunderbolt, you know, where it's basically like a, a you know 40 gigabit per second speed here. Um, it's close to 3000 megabytes per second, just under that. If again, if you do it separately, you're gonna get about half that speed. But when you put them in RAID zero, like I just did, you actually get 2,800, 2,900 megabytes per second. It's really cool. All right, next we're gonna do a 100 gigabyte data test just to prove that this is actually able to move this data in the amount of time we're saying. So take a look at my screen over here. I have 100 gig files here. We're gonna move it into this RAID, RAID we just set up and I'm gonna click this little button a little bit behind there. We're gonna let this go, but look how fast this thing. This is 100 gigs of data and uh, you can see how fast it's going here. So I might just go ahead and pause it here and skip right back at the end of it. Okay, we're getting down closer to the end. Take a look at this, we're almost done here. So how long is this gonna take? It actually took how long? 34.6 seconds. So 34.6 seconds, I was a little late to stop it, so it might have been somewhere around there. I was a little late to start it as well. But what does this come out to, right? So we can do, we can do the simple math in this if I just bring up a calculator here. So let's go ahead and do the math. Okay, here's the calculator right here. If I do the math on this, I'm gonna go ahead and take 100,000, divide it by the number of seconds here, and we're gonna see what this comes out to, 34.6 it said, and we're gonna click equal, 2,890 megabytes per second. So it actually, it was right on, right? So it moved that data in the exact speed that we thought it was going to based on the Blackmagic test, and it's a pure test right here, moving real data, 100 gigabytes. So obviously, you know, it depends on how many files you have and a whole bunch of other things and what drives you use, but you can see that it's realistic on this, you know, and it's finally built into a hub like this, and you can put up to, like I just said, you know, 16 terabytes in this thing, which is just crazy. And if you want redundancy built in, just do it in RAID 1, and then you actually have two different drives in there, and if one fails, you're gonna keep all your data on the other one. In RAID 0, that's not the case. If one drive fails, you lose all of your data. You can do RAID 1 also. This is great for that as well, and it gives you full redundancy, and you don't have that in a lot of play things like this as well, so that's a huge advantage to it as well. Okay, so now's the time where I'm gonna say, well, why isn't this a 10 out of 10? I do think this is a nine out of 10. It's one of the best ones I've tested so far. But what makes this a little bit different? Why isn't it a 10 out of 10? There's a couple small reasons. Number one is gonna be the thing that all these share. Mac minis, especially the M4s, have a terrible, they don't shield anything. It's, they have terrible shielding as far as Wi-Fi signals. And here we are putting it in a metal enclosure. So you are gonna lose a little bit of speed on your Wi-Fi here. Um, you'll see other videos come out later with tests and stuff. I wasn't able to fully test it, but I did notice some drops there. So that's number 
number one, um, you, you know, obviously if you use Ethernet, that's going to be something that's going to, it won't make any difference. So if you're an Ethernet user, this is perfect for you. But if you use Wi-Fi, you're going to see a little bit of a drop. Now, what I recommend doing is just buying something like a power line. I'll show you some pictures here. And that'll actually run your internet through your power lines. And then you can go ahead and run a cable from your power plug into the Mac mini. And that actually should kind of solve a lot of this problem as well. Now, I tested it even with some of the loss there. I noticed no difference when I was doing stuff. I couldn't even notice it on real-time usage. But I just wanted to report that just being completely honest. The other thing, obviously, is there's, you know, obviously some people are going to say they, 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 they want to put in some more advanced card slots on the top because professionals use the, the higher-end card slots for their cameras and stuff. That could be another, I guess, minus there. But I love the thing because it has all the ports that I need, plus you have your Mac Mini ports open. And overall, I think it's perfect as far as most people, right? You're not always going to be perfect, but I think it gets most of the things right. Okay, let's get into pricing and how you actually can pick one of these up now. Like I said, it's coming out very shortly. So what they're telling me is basically the super early bird special, I think the first 100 sold, are going to be $99. That's it, $99. A great deal, right? Then if you get into early bird, which is going to be a little bit later, it's up to 300 units they're going to sell around there for $129. So you got to be in there quick. And then basically the regular price is going to be $149. So you can save up to 50 bucks by getting an early. And a couple of the links you want to go to, so I'll have them all in the description. But first of all, they have two links for me. One is going to their main website where you can get a lot more information right here. And here it is in here. So you can go in here and you can put in your email here. It says grab early bird special right here and then it'll notify them to get you on the list there. So you can go ahead and do that. But also in here, you can go in and look at all the information in here. It does say triple displays. So you can kind of figure out exactly, I guess it's one from your Mac and two from this thing. But you get all the information in here um, if you need anything in here, including all the different speeds. Now, a couple things to note too on the SSD speeds though, depending on how much stuff you have plugged in, like a number of monitors and stuff, it could alter the speed of the SSDs just slightly because of the power consumption and stuff, but all of that information is on this page as well, so you guys can check that out. The other option is to go over here, and I'll show you the second link over here. Okay, this is what it's going to actually go off as, is this Kickstarter here. So you can go in here and click on Notify Me at Launch. Go ahead and click here, and then you can go ahead, and they'll actually notify you as soon as this thing launches. But it's going to be going through this Kickstarter, so you can go in here and get a lot of information here as well. There's a video on it as well, a second video in here. It shows you 16 terabytes. You get the idea. But these are the two pages I'll have links to, and those are the two pages that you can go to to get the, the additional information and get on the list to get that early bird special and all that stuff. And they'll be in the video description there for sure, so check that out. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. What do I think about this again? I think it's a 9 out of 10. Like I said, it has everything that I basically need. Of course, you can nitpick on things here and there, and there's going to always be differences depending on what you throw in there, what kind of drives and everything. But overall, I think it's great. But I think this one's the closest one so far, so I definitely wanted to review it. And uh, I love doing this. I love getting these things in advance and testing them. Subscribe to my channel. I do this all the time. Check out my channel. I do hundreds of products every year. So we'll talk to you the next one. Peace.